Um, another slow start for us t today. Um, we were just in the fog to start the game. We had no rhythm, no sense of urgency. Uh, we finally woke up a little bit going into halftime uh, in the second half. The game obviously is two halves. But, um, you know, to start the game, we just we weren't ourselves. And I'm um, just still trying to put my finger on it. But give them credit. You know, this is a team that lost to North Carolina last year in the tournament. The, they have a bunch of prideful seniors on their team. They're the oldest team in SEC. Uh, I'm sure they didn't like being eight and seven in the league. Uh, and they pl came out and played with a lot of um, urgency. Um, you know, we, we talked at halftime about trying to pick up our energy. I thought we did in the second half. Uh, specifically, Braxton came out and played a much better second half. But for us to be successful, we can't play 20 minutes or 22 minutes. We definitely can't turn the ball over 18 times. Another game where we get out-rebounded. And um, that's something that we're going to have to turn the corner on in both of those areas, taking care of the ball, rebounding. And, and, you know, I thought we did a good job of making some threes tonight. We didn't do such a good job from the free throw line. But at the end of the day, you know, give Mike and his team credit. Uh, those guys are hard-nosed players. And they, they came in and they wanted it really badly. You, you touched on just now in your opening comments, but a third straight game, third straight loss where you lose the battle on the board, especially on the, that offensive end. I guess defensively, what's going on there that they just can't seem to kind of pull down boards and they're given second and third chances. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rotational box house. First of all, we're getting broken down too much in penetration. And when we do, we got to get more guys in there to rebound. And, um, you know, our starting team is not the most physically imposing team. But, you know, it's all about the heart. It's all about the heart and, um, and tenacity. And we, we're asking a lot of these kids to do stuff they've never done before. Uh, a lot of them, you, you know, where they've come from, they can just roam on the perimeter. They don't get involved with a bunch of big guys uh, inside. So we'll continue to watch it on film, and hopefully we can turn the p corner in terms of rebounding the basketball and taking care of the basketball. We had too many turnovers uh, versus their traps, their zones, on our penetration, all of the things we work on. And uh, but like I told you guys, I'm the one that's responsible, number one. I, I'm the one that should have the bullseye on me because I'm the one coaching kids, and uh, we have to do a better job of getting them to respond. Hi, Coach. I have two of them. Uh, first, what is Colin Sexton's impact on your team's potential? Well, it's huge, you know, I, but it's not just him. You know, we've, we've had games this year where, you know, he, he didn't play. Uh, we've had games this year maybe where he didn't play well and we still won. Uh, but his impact is huge. You saw the way he got the ball up and down the floor in about two seconds. Uh, and I just think we need more of that. But if we can't rebound the basketball, if we've given up too many offensive rebounds, we can't get him in open court as much. So he has a huge uh, role on our team and his impact is, is great. But so is Dejon Ingrams and Braxton Keys and, you know, Dante Hall. You know, really hasn't been himself, you know, from an offensive standpoint. Those 12, 14, 16 points that he gets, uh, you know, during the stretch in this season are very, very helpful for us. So we got to figure out a way to get him back involved. All right, the second one. What's your reaction to this report of this FBI investigation? You know, we reviewed it, and uh, after we reviewed it, uh, we made a decision that uh, Colin was going to be available for us, and that's the extent of it. Um, Right now, I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to review and try to help our team get to the next level on both ends of the floor, try to help us grow into maturity a little bit because, um, you know, sometimes we, we make inexperienced um, decisions out there on the floor. Coach, they, they missed a front end with about 24 seconds left, and you, you – Got the ball down three, um, and ball goes into to Dante. Are you just looking for a two there? You're not looking to play for a three. Yeah, I mean, basically we got the ball up the floor in a couple of seconds and ran a little bit of a, you know, fake situation that we like to run and trying to get the defense to shift and basically got the ball to our big guy in the paint where he can go up and dunk it or hopefully get a three-point play. And fortunately, unfortunately, we didn't get the three-point play. 
and uh, unfortunately we missed the free throws. But I don't think during that time, you know, that we need to come down and just launch a three. There's still, you know, quite a bit of time left in the game. You alluded to it a little bit earlier. Dante hasn't been himself these past two or three games. Are you seeing parallels in the last two or three performances that have rendered what's going on? No, not really. It's not Dante's fault. I got to do a better job of coaching him up. You know, just got to do a better job of figuring out, getting him in the right spots, uh, you know, getting him the ball a little bit more. He's got to make himself available. Um, no, that, that's what it is. It's, 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 since I've been here, we, it's always about the coaching staff doing a better job first before the players. How do you try to attack the turnover thing? I know that's probably the most yeah. disappointing thing all year because you think they would get better and they're kind of the same in that part. When we've had, you know, this type of assist to turnover ratio in our last three losses, it looks exactly the same. When we win on a light night like tonight, we'll probably have, you know, 16, 17 assists on eight turnovers. You're really just beating yourself. And this team loves to reach. We knew it coming in, but they trapped the post. Poor spacing. We drove the ball. You know, they got two on the ball, four hands on the ball. We weren't strong with it enough. And, um, you know, it's just something we have to continue to review and get better at. Coach, they, they seemed especially most of the game to be the more physical team. How do you get your team to play with more of an edge like that? Well, I just think you, you're dealing with some grown men, Drew. <laughs> At the end of the day, we can't make ourselves over. You know, we, we have two pretty fast freshmen that start and one shoots it and one is, you know, is a penetrator. And, you know, now Braxton and Dejon, who were in those spots last year, they've kind of shifted down a little bit. And, but we thought we could make up for it a little bit on offense by taking care of the basketball, maybe making some more shots and having, you know, more creativity in our offense. And we just haven't gotten to that point consistently. But, you know, when you're talking about Barford and Macon, these are two guys declared for the draft last year, Juco kids. And when you've made it as far as they made it last year in the tournament, 